All right. Thanks everyone for taking the time out of your Friday again to join us this, this quarter for the next faith community meeting. I am happy to say that we are joined by Lori Smith, our training coordinator here at Direction Home, who's going to talk to us a little bit about falls prevention and then some of the different health and wellness opportunities that we have for host sites and um, aspiring health and wellness instructors. So I will turn it over to her for the remainder of the meeting. All right, thank you. It's dangerous giving me all this power, but it's Friday, let's do what we do. Um, yeah, thank you, Courtney. As she said, my name is Marie Smith. I am the training coordin coordinator with Direction Home. Um, the bulk of what I do is split between what we'll talk about here and our professional CEU trainings. We do have social workers and nurses, counselors and nursing home administrators, both on our staff and as community partners. So we offer that, that educational opportunity to them and uh, the ability to maintain their licensure. But today I'm going to talk with you about our health and wellness workshops and the opportunities that they can create. Um, so first, a few stats, and I realize that I am more than likely preaching to the choir, as it were. So these first few stats come from the Ohio Department of Health from a study that they pulled together in 2019 based on falls. And we will email these slides to you um, after this presentation is done. So if you wanna take a deeper dive into any of these stats, anything that I have pulled information from has a link at the bottom of that slide. So you can go ahead and click on that link and do a deeper dive for any information if you would like that you see on my slides. So as far as falls are concerned, and this is just Ohioans age 65 and over, uh, about one in three fall each and every single year, and they do see that it is the leading cause of injury in that population of older adults. Uh, falls cause 60% of fatal traumatic brain injuries, and 57% of fall-related deaths occur in the home, not outside of the home. Still continuing on, it causes almost 1,500 deaths in older adults, 65 and older each year, almost 19,000 hospitalizations and just over 75,000 emergency department visits. So you can see it's, it's a big concern with that population. So, you know, we'll talk about things we can do as we move on. In looking at chronic conditions, this was taken from the National Council on Aging. And again, that link is there if you want to take a deeper dive into any of these stats. Um, and this is just older adults on Medicare. So an even smaller overall population that we're talking about here with these particular statistics. 58% have hypertension or high blood pressure. 47% have high cholesterol. 31% have some form of arthritis. 29% coronary heart disease, 27% diabetes, type one or two, 18% have chronic kidney disease, 14% have heart failure, 14% depression. So we're not even just talking about physical ailments, but mental health as well. 11% are experiencing Alzheimer's disease or another form of dementia. And 11% have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And again, we are just talking about older adults who are receiving Medicare, which is where these stats are pulled from. Chronic health conditions, 80% of that population have at least one chronic condition, 80%, 80%. 68%, which is well over half, have at least two or more chronic conditions. So when we think about, you know, not just a single chronic condition that somebody is dealing with, but multiple, that's a huge health concern. And when we look at the religious landscape, what typically makes up your congregation? And I know you see this, but this is from a Pew Research study. Um, and this is an age distribution. So you, if you look at this little bar graph down here in the corner, you can see uh, 350, almost half of your congregation is population 50 on up. And that leads, leaves the other 50% for other age brackets to break down. So about half of your congregations that we see, and, and yours in particular might be a little bit different, but on average across all congregations in Ohio, about half of your congregation is made up of those older adults. This is a 
couple of snapshots getting into um, a study done by the Ohio Department of Aging. This one was released in 2020. Uh, I believe we are either still in the process of currently working on one or we just wrapped up giving information for the next summary assessment of older Ohioans. This is the executive summary. Again, if you want to see the full study and the full snapshots, I just took some screenshots here. Um, but this executive summary provides that comprehensive picture of the health and well being of older adult Ohioans so that we, the, the Ohio Department on Aging, the area agencies on aging across Ohio can pull together a, a plan on how we want to help our populations. This is this in particular is looking at how that population is going to increase in the coming years. So between 2010 and 2030, the number of Ohioans age 60 and older is projected to increase by 33.4%. Ohio's total population, so all of us, is expected to grow by just 0.7%. The entire population of the state is expected to increase by less than 1%. The older adult population, 33 and a half, almost 33 and a half percent. That's huge. Mm -hmm. So Ohioans age 60 and older will make up 26.3 of Ohio's total population. Something else they found, chronic conditions, those things that you know we can't fix, it's just something ongoing. Older Ohioans have a higher hypertension prevalence than the US overall. So go Ohio to be first on something. And heart disease is the leading cause of death for Ohioans age 60 and older. Deaths caused by Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease are among the top 10 causes of death for the oldest Ohioans age 75 and older. So these, these are, it's a big concern. We've got a big population of those older adults and we have the highest hypertension rate in the United States. So we need to start looking at how we can help these people. Not only just those older adults, but those family caregivers the sons, the daughters, the, the family members that are helping those older adults take care of themselves, either with finances, getting them to and from doctor's appointments. They need cares too, or they need care and, and mental health support and just support overall. When we look at Ohio, Ohio performs poorly relative to other states on policies that support family caregivers, including caregivers who work, which is a lot of them. Although Ohio ranks in the top half of states on several indicators of workplace or workforce capacity, inadequate home and community-based long-term services and supports is a concern among key stakeholders. We need to get better, right? So how do we do that? Let's first talk about how you in the faith community can help. What can we do? This was taken from a research paper done by, I believe it's Catholic, Hmm, I would have to click that link to get the exact name of it again, but it was done by a faith-based organization. And these are quotes pulled from a paper they did. Again, if you would like to see that paper, click that link once you receive the slides. But by working and building closer relationships with local health providers, faith communities can play a key role in keeping their older adult populations, those older persons in their congregations, as healthy as possible and living in the setting they prefer. We know through research that older adults want to stay in their homes. They want to remain living in the communities where they've um, been themselves raised, where they've raised their families. We can help do that by working together. Faith-based or organizations can serve as connectors between volunteers and the population who needs basic assistance. And faith communities can promote health and well being. And by providing these services, houses of worship may make or renew their links to members of their own communities. So, not only can you reach back out to people that maybe you had in your congregation, and maybe for, for whatever reason, maybe it is an older adult that doesn't have the capacity to get out and about like they used to, or you just want to reach out to new members in your community by working jointly with healthcare providers and focusing on health and wellness of not only your congregation, but community members, you can make new connections too. And that's something we would all like to see. Thank you, Catholic Health Association, Association of the US. So the next thing is how can we help at Direction Home? 
things that we are doing as an area agency on aging and all area agencies on aging offer evidence-based health and wellness workshops. The one we offer at this moment is uh, Taiji Shuan, Moving for Better Balance. It is a falls prevention workshop. Um, I just started one. I had my second class of the entire workshop this morning. We are also adding bingo size, and we'll talk about that in a moment, and powerful tools for caregivers. Those are our three that we are focused on as far as our evidence-based workshops. And what I mean by evidence-based workshops is the organizations and the entities that built these workshops did it with data and science and research. They, um, as they built these programs, they asked their members or their, their participants about any gains or improvements that they were making as they were in the testing phase of these workshops to make sure, and again, it's data-driven, that people who participated in these workshops showed improvement. And uh, if anybody would like to see with these individual classes what that data is, please let me know. I am more than happy to share what that looks like for you. Um, and then they also continually evaluate these workshops to make sure that the efficacy is still high. And they look to see if anything needs adjusted, e whether that be in the content or in the manner that it is led. And if so, they adjust it again to maximize those benefits of these classes. So the first one we'll look at is Tai Chi Chuan, Moving for Better Balance. You may see it abbreviated TJQMBB. We are nothing if not a fan of uh, acronyms and uh, abbreviations. So this again is a falls prevention workshop and it benefits older adults who are at a higher risk for falls. And through the course of this workshop, we learn eight forms of Yang style Tai Chi. Now this is not a strict Yang style Tai Chi practice. I am by any stretch of the imagination, not a Tai Chi master. Each of these forms has been modified in order to benefit older adults at a higher risk for falls or they have a concern for falls. It also works really well. Beautiful, Jeannie, I can't wait to talk with you. Um, but they are modified to have the most impact uh, for those older adults with a higher risk for falls. And it also works really well for folks experiencing Parkinson's disease and maybe a little unsteady on their feet. We also do what is called mini therapeutic movements. And it is a lot of times very small movements in order to strengthen our ankles. You wouldn't think of needing to strengthen your toes, but we do that. We uh, shift our weight forward. So our toes, as we lean forward, grip, into whatever surface we're standing on. And that's very useful in that if you find yourself off balance, you can grip in with those little toe muscles and have the ankle strength and the Achilles tendon flexibility to be able to catch yourself and that core strength. And over the course of this workshop, it increases your overall balance, strength, and flexibility. Here's a bit of the data that is shown it has been shown to improve balance by a range of 55 to 58% in people who complete a full workshop. And it is kind of a long workshop. I, I'm not going to uh, hide that by any stretch of the imagination. They are one hour sessions. We hold those sessions twice a week over the course of 24 weeks. So it is a longer program and we do build on the complexity of the of the forms and the mini therapeutic movements as our strength increases. And that gentleman that you see there that is facing us, reaching his arms out to us is actually the gentleman who did the research and developed this program. And he still does go out and lead these classes. And I'll tell you what, people truly, truly enjoy this class. I have a blast leading it. I love to lead it. Going back to this snapshot on the chronic conditions, just to remind you that Ohio is number one in hypertension prevalence. Um, we need to really improve there. So we are actively bringing on a program called Bingo Size. Um, this is something brand new to us. I am in the process of obtaining the license for us to use and being trained as a leader. So I can um, go out into our four county community and lead this class, I seriously can't wait. Who doesn't love bingo? And while we are doing bingo, it combines the game with exercise. That's one way we can lead it with just a focus on exercise, or 
We can do it with falls prevention and exercise, or we can do it with nutrition and exercise. And if we do it that nutrition and exercise, that hits the chronic condition um, piece because we know how very important nutrition and exercise are to managing chronic conditions, right? Bingo size has a uh, 45 minute to an hour sessions that are held twice a week. Um, and we hold those at a minimum of six weeks. There is no hard and fast stop rule, but we like to see at least 12 individual sessions. So six weeks. Um, I am going to see how that goes once I am able to get out into our communities and lead this and see if that seems like a good uh, length of time. Um, but at this point, I think a six week class twice a week is, is fantastic. And there are prizes that can be won. I'm gonna share just a quick video. This is posted to the Bingo Size site. So if you do want to look into this and uh, you can go to bingosize.com and this is a video of what that program looks like. Exercise can help prevent chronic diseases and falls in older adults, but unfortunately, less than 15% of older adults exercise regularly. Many older adults report that traditional exercise programs are not enjoyable, leading to inactivity and related health issues. Bingo Size offers a unique solution that mixes exercise, health education, and bingo to help overcome health problems and participants across the entire spectrum of care. It's completely adaptable for all types of facilities and it's beneficial for all ranges of physical and mental ability. Evidence shows social, cognitive, and physical improvements. And the best part, it's fun. There are two ways to play bingo size. The traditional version and using a mobile app on any electronic device. Both versions are led by trained leaders utilizing the contents of Bingo Size in a box. Bingo Size is a fun, affordable way to improve health and quality of life. For more information, visit our website at www.bingosize.com. Seriously, though, how fun does that look? Yeah. Right? I, I want to. I cannot wait to start doing that. That's fun. Good. Right? I'm excited. Yeah. So yeah. moving on, I know we saw this snapshot before about caregiver supports and, and clearly we need to start doing better in Ohio um, for our family caregivers. They are such an important part of one caring for our older adults in that support system. So we really, really, really need to kind of, you know, give them big virtual hugs and take care of them. Um, so the third of our evidence-based programs is powerful tools for caregivers. And it absolutely focuses a thousand percent on those family caregivers. Um, we look to increase their own self-care. Um, I think we are getting better as a society in learning that we can't give to others what we don't have. If we totally exhaust ourselves, we can't give. And it is not selfish to take care of us. So one, we give them permission. It is Please do, in fact, take care of yourself and ways to do that in your busy, busy world. We also uh, reduce feelings of anger, guilt, and depression. We know family caregivers do what they do out of love for that family member, but that's not to say that doesn't come along with a lot of very difficult emotions that they may uh, have. Um, they may start to feel anger at the situation, not necessarily the person they're caring for, but the situation, because it can be very stressful and guilt that maybe they feel like they're not being the best caregiver that they can be, or they feel guilty that they feel angry. And then depression can come into that too. And we want to make sure that people understand all these feelings are valid. They are not the only ones that have them. And we can help move past those feelings. Um, we also show uh, that people have increased confidence after taking this workshop. They feel like they want or not alone. It can be a very solitary feeling um, being in the role of a caregiver. 
And we give them that confidence that yes, you are a, a really amazing human being and you are doing great things. You're doing good things. And it really does increase their confidence. And then we also give them community resources to reach out with. Um, we give them the tools that they can really use in order to be the best version of themselves and the best caregiver that they can be. Powerful Tools for Caregivers is 90-minute uh, sessions held once a week over the course of six weeks. And that one is co-led by two trained certified leaders. So looking at all that, we know that it would be a fantastic thing if the faith communities would reach out and work with the healthcare providers and work in tandem, um, especially because a lot of times you know, your, your congregation trusts you and, and you may have insights into their world that uh, others may not. You may see that they may need some assistance and some help where others may not. So you can reach out and let them know, hey, I've got these resources out there. And then we have these health and wellness education um, opportunities that we can take care of them a little bit better, um, teach them ways to uh, strengthen their bodies and their minds and take care of themselves. So how can we do that? We are actively looking for what we are calling host site partners. And it is a really unique way to serve your, your very unique population and engage them as well. We have started doing a bit of monetary compensation in order to do so. Um, and what that looks like is if you decide to come on as a host site partner with us, and what that means is we would ask you to um, take at least one of these evidence-based programs, the Taiji Schwan, the Powerful Tools for Caregivers, or the Bingo Size, or if you wanna do all three, I'm not turning that down, um, and add that to your revolving calendar on a rotating basis. It's just something you've got on your calendar. You are a host site for us. We can rely on you to um, host and offer these classes to your members on a regular basis. And what that would look like is every time you offer one of these workshops, you would receive $100 just for the use of the site. And we don't care how in the world you spend it. If you wanna spend it on marketing of these programs, you're more than welcome. If you are trying to get another program up and running and you could use a little bit more money to do that, use it for that. If you wanna put it in your slush funds, do it, do that. However you wanna use that money. It is not limited by any stretch of the imagination. And then for every participant that attends the workshop and is considered a completer of that workshop, which means they take at least 75% of those individual classes. And remember, Taiji Schwan has 48 individual sessions. So they would need to complete, I believe it's 36 of those individual sessions in order to be a completer. Um, powerful Tools for Caregivers is uh, six classes. So I think it's four. They need to attend at least four of those classes. And bingo size, I'm not quick on math. So <laughs> if it's 12 classes, what, eight, 10? Somewhere in there to be considered a completer. And for each person considered a completer, you get an additional $25 um, to use as you wish. On our part, we give you ongoing program support. We will help you market these classes um, to help fill the seats. Uh, we will help with any questions you have with the program. Um, and we provide training if you would like to have your own staff, or if you've got anybody in your congregation who you think might be a fantastic volunteer leader for these, um, we cover the cost of training. So we will get together, um, we will find the trainings for them to be able to be these certified leaders and we cover all costs of that. And we are looking for places that have the space to do this, like churches, uh, libraries have great spaces, congregate meal sites, senior centers, and YMCAs. We are not limiting ourselves to that list, but it's things like that. And we know churches, um, one, it would benefit your congregation. Two, it would help us get the word out about what we do. And coming together like that just helps that population, again, be healthier, be safer, and be able to age in the place that they want to. Where can these classes be led? Um, over the course of the pandemic, we flipped them to virtual, and I don't see that going away anytime soon. Benefits of that is, of course, we're socially distant. We're in our own homes individually. There is no travel involved. So if you're looking at older adults who maybe aren't driving anymore, or shoot, we're coming out of winter, um, 
Although I heard there might be a snowstorm again this, this weekend. So if the weather is just bad, you don't have to worry about travel. Everybody is just in their own space on their own computer and you don't have to worry about driving. And then of course you have that broader reach. So, you know, you might have people coming in from a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes away. But if you're doing it virtually, you can reach people a few hours away. That's fine. They don't have to worry about that long commute. The flip side of that is maybe it's not quite as personal. And for things like Taiji Xuan, it's a little bit more difficult to, um, I, I, I require that cameras are on during Taiji Xuan just so I can keep my eyes on people and make sure they're safe. Um, so that uh, is a little bit more difficult with virtual, but I think the benefits outweigh those. We are creeping back to in-person. Oh, I cannot wait. I miss people so bad. Um, so benefits of in-person are, of course, you've got that direct one-on-one -on -one, uh, instruction. You know, it's, it's always so great to really be in the same room with the people that you're interacting with. I think it's just, it just feels so much um, more energetic. I love it. And you get that social interaction. You do in the virtual world too, but there's just something about being in person in that social interaction. And coming out of this past two years, I really truly think we need that social interaction on a level like we've not seen in our lifetime. Um, social isolation always has been a very real thing, compounded these past two years. Uh, depression rates have gone up, so we need to get back in person, and I love having that social interaction. So there are benefits to both styles, and you can choose to lead these workshops however you like. If you would like to offer them in person solely, you can do that. If you want to solely be virtual, you can do that. If you would like to mix the two and maybe offer the workshop this time in person and the next time virtual, you can do that too. The only thing I would not recommend is uh, scheduling a workshop and having some of the classes in person and some virtual. I would do one or the other per workshop, but that would be the only thing I would say about that. Again, we are also looking for volunteer leaders. So not only do we need the space, but we are looking for fantastic, dynamic, engaging people to be able to lead these classes. People who love working with older adults, um, love to teach. You don't have to be a professional to do this. In your working world, you might be a nurse, a nutritionist, a doctor, a nurse, whatever. But we ask you, if you want to lead one of these workshops, take that professional hat off. We want to have these led by peers and people who um, can, can connect with these con uh, concerns that people are going through. If you have a chronic condition that you can really relate, say, I understand because I have that, that same feeling, those same symptoms. I'm off balance too. Oh my gosh, my Tai Chi class this morning, spring allergies are kicking in and it's, it's messing with my sinuses. So for about half the day, every day, I feel a little bit dizzy. I feel off balance and I am leading a falls prevention class. I told them today, I was like, if you want to start a betting board to see if I actually do stay on my feet, feel free. My feelings are not going to be hurt, but I am with you in this feeling off balance. I get it. And then of course, we're looking for people who want to help older adults. Benefits of becoming a volunteer leading uh, leader with us. As I mentioned, we provide that training for no out-of-pocket cost to you. That is both the initial training to become certified, and then these evidence-based classes do offer refresher trainings that we um, ask that you attend as well. And that is exactly what it sounds like, a refresher to make sure you are um, up to date at, on those skills. And you know, as we lead, we may forget little pieces, parts of that training. It just gives us a reminder of, of the content that it has. You get that ongoing support from us, administrative, technical, whatever you need. If you have any questions, if you need help setting up the classes, we can do that with you. And there is monetary compensation for the volunteer leaders as well. For each and every session of a workshop that you lead, you would receive $25. Um, so for something like Tai Chi that has those 48 sessions, it can be up to $1,200 in compensation. Uh, for Tai Chi, again, since it is such a long program, we don't make you wait that almost six months to get that. We will pay out every eight weeks um, for every, again, class that you do indeed lead. Um, that being said, we also understand that life happens. 
if you are not able to lead one of your classes that particular day and we need to call in a sub for you, that is absolutely fine. If you are a substitute volunteer leader and you step in for somebody, you would receive $35 for subbing that day. Um, but please do keep in mind, if you decide to become a volunteer leader with us, plan on leading that entire workshop. Um, again, we understand things happen, but we don't want to have you plan a workshop knowing that you are not going to be able to lead four out of those six sessions. So you know, just plan accordingly. And it doesn't have to be, I think one of the most common questions I get is, well, when do I offer these? Does it have to be on a Monday and Wednesday from nine to 10? No, if whatever works for your calendar is when you schedule these classes for. I've done them weekday mornings. I've done them on the weekend. I've done them in the evening. Whatever works best for your calendar, just as long as it's a consistent schedule. So that is our health and wellness offerings. Other ways that we can really work together is uh, make referrals to us. We understand uh, that people have privacy concerns. So we do have what we call need a little help cards and they are postcard size. And so if you see people in your congregation or people that you know in your day-to-day -day worlds that you know may need a little help that uh, we as an area agency on aging might be able to help with. If it's these health and wellness classes, or anything else that we might have, any other programs and supports that we might have, you can give them that card. So you're not giving us their information, their privacy is not compromised. You can say, hey, I notice you uh, might need a little help with such and such or however you wanna word it, this organization might be able to help you and give them that card. Uh, Courtney kindly dropped the link into our referral page on our website. That is another way if you see somebody that uh, may need some assistance, you can make an online referral and we'll get that and we'll, we'll get them started on the correct program. She also just dropped in the chat box. Um, if you click on that PDF, it says need a little help. You can download that to your computer and print those if you like. For the referral, if you go to our website, this is what the homepage looks like. Our website is www.dhad.org. It stands for Direction Home Aging and Disabilities. That is what it looks like as you come to our homepage. And as you scroll down that page, you will see where it says to make a referral. And that's what the online referral form looks like. Again, you can complete that and then we will reach out to that person and get them started and get them some programs and supports. So with all that said, are there any questions at all? Any comments, questions that I can answer for you today based on our health and wellness programming, becoming a host leader, becoming a volunteer leader, anything at all? Do we wanna talk about the weather? We'll do that. Lori, uh, this is Jeannie. <laughs> on, the, on the question, on the um, virtual, um, the computer, Availability and knowledge for some of the older folks is tough, uh, which okay. would limit them to that option. Have, has that been thought through on how that would be handled? So, yes, um, we understand that there is somewhat of that limitation. Um, we do have, although I will have to double check with our program coordinator on this, but we, not too long ago, um, got, Courtney, do you remember, was it 150 computers in laptops? The most recent wave that mm -hmm. came in a couple weeks ago, that sounds mm -hmm. about right. Probably somewhere between 100 and that, yeah. Yeah, tablets, I will I have to see time. tablets. Mm -hmm. And we'll have to see how many are spoken for. But they are available to uh, older adults who, they, they do have to meet some guidelines. Um, as far as financial eligibility, and we do ask um, that they would register for one of these evidence-based workshops. Um, but if they qualify to receive one of those tablets, we can get that to them. There are instructions on how to use it, tech support, how to use it. We can show them how to use Zoom and get logged in. Um, and again, I, we, we did this early on in the pandemic and we also had hotspots available. I'm, I will have to double check if that is true this time around or not. Um, I will check and get back with you on that one. And I know we just have, we have Holly on staff now as well, that's uh, trained with helping the recipients of those devices, um, of those new devices, as well as the ones that we were able to distribute in the past year, year and a half. 
um, she's been trained on on helping individuals navigate those and navigate the online virtual programs as well. Yeah. So that's but if they don't have right. Wi-Fi or internet, you know, and I know you talked about the hotspots. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Uh, those are just hurdles that I, I'm sure can be overcome. Yeah, we under. Yeah, we completely understand. And I, I haven't found, as soon as I find the 100% perfect way of offering these classes, I just, I will be the happiest person on the face of the planet. <laughs> you know, there's, there's barriers with virtual, like you say, the, the access to the technology, the knowledge of how to use the technology. Sure. And then on the flip side of that, there's the in-person with, you know, you may mm -hmm. not have the transportation available. And it's, I need true. that perfect world. I need that utopia so bad. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's yeah. true. Um, yeah, and, 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 and am I right in understanding it's 50 plus age for um, the people that participate in these programs? Yeah, and if somebody is younger, we're not going to smack their hands and turn them away. Um, I think especially the Taiji Shuan, because it also very much benefits uh, people with Parkinson's disease. Sure. So it is our main focus. Um, we are funded by the Ohio Department of Aging Right. to be able to offer these classes for no charge to the participants. Um, so all of these classes are free for people to attend. There is no cost whatsoever. Um, and that is how we are able to do that. So of course the Ohio Department of Aging would like us to target our older adult population sure. um, and focus on them first. But again, we are not going to look at somebody 35 and say, mm, sorry, no. And it may be a situation where you know, a family member brings them and right. they want to be there too. Exactly. You know, and yeah. they're not 50. Okay. Yeah, All exactly. Right. Caretakers are more than welcome. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like yeah. to talk to you some more about it. Um, right on, Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm at Cleveland Clinic Lifestyle five days a week, taking all kinds of classes. And, and so, you know, my mind is going, you know, that would be kind of a fun thing to do, you know, yes. and to help the the people that I decided I wanted to help when I became involved with Direction Home. So, right, yep, that yeah. is perfect, a perfect mix. Hmm. Yeah. I'm kind of excited. Me too. Oh, I will <laughs> say, um, we we just put out some ads asking about those volunteer leaders, and I do want to make sure there is a commitment. Um, again, because we are, uh, we are covering the cost of training sure. and there are requirements uh, from the program developers in order to main maintain certification. So there is a commitment if you would like to become a leader with us. We do ask that if you want to lead at least one of these workshops that you hang in with us for about two years. Um, and then, of course, at the end of that two years, if, you were, if your thought was, mm, this, is, this is not for me, um, that's fine, but because you know we put in the training costs and the time, absolutely, um, we would like you to hang with us for two years. Yeah, and and I can see how churches would be a great um, format for these programs, mm -hmm. and I am prepared to sit down with, you know, my pastor and talk about these things. It's a big church, fantastic. So, um, yeah, it's almost like it. It will just keep you know, renewing its own participants. Exactly. Yeah. Word of mouth is the best yeah. yes. way to encourage people to exactly. be there. Exactly. Okay. Um, we'll talk later because I do want yeah, to talk please. some more about it. Please. I don't want to monopolize everything here, but yeah. yeah. I was going to say, Darlene, I've seen your hand up for a while. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know where she went. No, you're fine. Thank you. Um, what I want to know, is this just, since you're an Akron area, is it just for the Akron area? I live in Columbus, or do they have it here in Columbus too, this program you're talking mm -hmm. about? So you would want to reach out to your Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging, and I can get you that contact information. They may or may not have the same evidence-based programs that I talked about here today. All area agencies are required to offer evidence-based programming, um, and ODA asks us, uh, they have kind of their own suite, as it were, um, but it, as long as it is an evidence-based program approved by uh, NCOA, we can use uh, the Title 3D funds to fund it. 
Um, so, so it may not be the same exact evidence-based classes that the Columbus Area Agency on Aging has, um, but reach out to them. And again, I'll get you that contact information so you can get right in touch with my equivalent um, and ask them what they have available if they are also looking for volunteer leaders and how they are structured. Okay, so I just wanna make sure I understand. So the answer is I can't access it in Akron, that's just for the, what you're doing is just for the Akron area. I would have right. to do mine. Okay. Right. Thank you. Sounds like an awesome program. Thank yeah, you. and um, I'll, I'll tack on to that one too. Um, to offer to become a, uh, an instructor and work, or uh, not work for us, but work with us to, to offer those classes or as a host site, it would be our four counties of coverage. So Portage, Stark, mm -hmm. Summit, and Wayne. Um, but for participants for our virtual ones, we've had people jumping on from, all over the world. Um, yeah. But we had, what was it? Was it Indonesia for one of the Taiji Chuan? So. Yeah. Somewhere, yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, I know my that class started on. at 9.30 in the morning and she was joining us 9.30 at night, her time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so cool. Yep. So I, I think I mean, you've got, a, you've got a, lot, a high demand here, Lori. <laughs> we have um, John and Lisa. And then Cheryl unmuted a while ago, so I don't know if, if she had a question either, but we can go over to John if he's ready. Yeah, so quick question. Do you have um, live sessions that we could actually stop by and watch so that we can get an idea of, you know, whether it fits for our community or not? So uh, Courtney is leading an in-person one at Nordonia Hills Branch Library right now. Um, so she can let you know the schedule of that one if you want to see an in-person Taiji Xuan. And I just started, if you want to see how the virtual works, I just started a virtual class. I just led day two earlier this morning. And uh, we can email what both of those schedules are to this group um, and the registration link for the virtual if, if you would like to pop in and join that. What about the uh, caregiver one? Caregiver one, I have got to get one of those on the schedule. <laughs> um, so it's, it's Teresa and myself. Teresa, our family caregiver support specialist, and I are trained to lead it. And actually, I was just talking with her about getting another one of those on the books. Um, but when we do, absolutely, we, will, we can email this group and you can pop in and see what that content looks like. I've got zero qualms about people watching and seeing and making sure that it's right for your location. In fact, please do. I would like to, I would like you to be certain about it before, you know, signing on for sure. All right. Any other, let's see. I don't know who was first, Cheryl, Lisa. I'll go. Um, I want, just wanted to ask, are there any, um, as far as being a host site, is there a minimum number of people you have to have? Um, so the program designers, this is not coming from us, but it's, it's the way the programs were built in that evidence-based model. Mm -hmm. They like to see a minimum of 10 people. Okay. And that's because, especially for the powerful tools for caregivers, there's a lot of brainstorming and back and forth okay. idea sharing. So they want it to be between 10 and 15 people. So large enough group that ideas can be shared, but not so large that people might feel lost. Okay. So somewhere in there is, is your chef's kiss number of, of people to attend these classes. Okay. And all the classes are during the day. Don't have to be. Whatever works for your calendar. If, okay. if you want to be a host site or a leader and evenings work better for your schedule and your participants. If you want to lead them at three in the morning, you've got a bunch of night owls or oh, very early morning owls. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, no. we will no, I not. Don't. I am morning. not the night owl. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah, but that's, that's yeah. Whatever okay. works best for you and your calendar and your participants. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. Lisa. So I do this every time I'm given the opportunity. I, um, I love the caregiver support group. I've been a member of the caregiver support group with Teresa for, um, gosh, I'm going to, it was pre-pandemic, I think, or no. So we started virtual. So um, I think it was during 2020. And um, I, I just want to tell everyone and give a testimony on how impressive that group is. It's a group of caregivers. We all have different 
levels of caregiving. There are several of us that are secondary caregivers, where in my case, I have a stepdad that's home with my mom with dementia, but um, I'm part of the care team. And we're able to support each other as well as um, get lots of great information from Teresa and Direction Home. And it's been life-changing for several of our members to be able to not feel alone during all this time. And, you know, sometimes as a caregiver, you can get into, um, I don't want to say a pity party phase, but you kind of get there sometimes. And it, sometimes when you get a chance to help someone else with some advice and, and just sit and talk for an hour online, we've done it. Uh, we've actually met in person once when the pandemic um, waned a little last summer, we met in a backyard and we're hoping to again. But if you know someone who is caregiving and um, whether they're struggling or not, maybe they're just sailing through and they could give support to somebody else. There's nothing like giving back that makes you feel great. And I'm so glad I've had that for the last um, two years. So just wanted to give that shout out to Teresa and that support group. Yeah, she's phenomenal. And please feel free to take all of this information and just throw it around like confetti. Um, the more people we can reach, the more people we can help. Please. Please, the other please, thing, Lori, just real quick, I swear, is that that is confidential. We all sign confidentiality um, agreements with each other. We don't share each other's information outside of our group. And we're, we're pretty tight and um, really care about each other. We cry with each other. We laugh with each other. And again, it's, it's been all virtual, but it doesn't feel like it. It feels like a hug every Monday. Oh, that is fantastic. Yeah, that is important to know that everything that is done um, with the caregiver support group that Lisa was talking about in these evidence-based workshops, um, it is like Vegas. What happens in those groups stays in those groups. That is very, very important to us. So we feel free and comfortable to open up and share. Um, because as Lisa said, sometimes we get into some emotions that are really hard to get into. And we want to make sure that everybody feels uh, safe and open to do so. So any other questions, comments? I'm going to scroll through and see if I see any other hands up. I am more than happy to help. Um, if you think of any questions, maybe after we leave here today, please feel free to email or call me. Um, I am ecstatic to have questions be asked of these programs. Um, all of our contact information is here. Here is Teresa's for that caregiver support group. Um, there is her email and her direct line there. If you wanna get a hold of me for these wellness workshops that we just discussed, possibly becoming maybe a volunteer leader or a host site, or just if you would like to attend those uh, classes, this is my contact information here. We also do speaking engagements. If you would like us to come into your church or uh, if you're associated with any other, other organization and you would like us to come in and talk about who Direction Home is and what we do, the programs and services and supports that we offer. We have a speakers bureau that again is led by our fearless Courtney Flickinger. She can get you on the way. Um, and if you know of anybody that needs help, this is the contact information for our Aging and Disability Resource Center. Yes, Senior Summit. Um, so if you know of anybody or if you yourself, a family member, um, are looking for a, a support system or a program, give our Aging and Disability Resource Center a call. It is free to do so. And uh, we are not trying to sell you a darn thing. You know, so we are not funded by an insurance company. That's not the way that works. We are unbiased and we are out to improve your situation, period. We want to get you help. So please do contact them. And then Lisa just dropped in Senior Summit. Um, Lisa, I'm gonna let you talk about that. Yes, please. I if you haven't heard my voice enough already. Um, <laughs> so the Senior Summit is a two-day event, a conference for um, CEUs and CLEs on Friday. And then on Saturday, it's an expo free and open to the public. All Summit County residents are gonna wanna attend this especially if you're a senior or uh, love someone who's a senior. So it's free. First 500 residents or uh, um, registrants get a uh, free lunch from Vantage Aging Meals on Wheels. And there's going to be grab and go breakfast. I think Panera is the one that's going to provide that. It's at Firestone Community Learning Center in Akron, but it is a countywide event. 
Um, we had people come from outside the county last year as well, but most of the services are going to be Summit County focused. So um, that's the link. Please share it. That's It's free. Um, and we're hoping for a thousand seniors to come through that day, a beautiful day in May. We're hoping not going to look anything like this outside. And uh, we're going to celebrate seniors. Fun stuff. Tuesday musical group. Um, Ian Lane, who's a Jimmy Buffett tribute band, a senior jazz band. Um, so fun stuff too, but really meaningful things like falls prevention and um, uh, safety from the prosecutor's office. Lots of great information as well as that all those freebies too. So share that with whoever. And if you need some posters, postcards, um, or somebody to come out and talk about it, reach out to Lori or I because, or even Courtney, because we'll just drag her in and make her talk about it too. So <laughs> thanks for the chance, Lori. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. So any other questions, comments, thoughts? I think the one piece of information that I didn't share as I was going through that contact list is our ombudsman volunteers and interns. Um, if you know somebody who would like to volunteer with our ombudsman department, and those are the folks that hold up residence rights in long-term care facilities, um, we are always looking for volunteers and ombudsmen. And Lynette Whitty Bryant is who you would contact for that. Her contact information is down at the bottom left of the screen there. So, okay, <laughs> I'm done. I like to talk. I miss people, you guys. <laughs> I miss people. Yeah, um, if you couldn't tell, Lori's very knowledgeable about a lot of things and a very amazing presenter. So I'm um, very happy to have her on today. And also, if you couldn't tell, I think I see a lot of familiar names and faces uh, here on our participant list. So you're already probably very familiar, but we also have a knack for pulling people in and all sorts of, they're pulling me into Senior Summit. We'll pull you in anywhere. Um, yes, I see John's on here. I've looped John into our Aging and Disability Resource Center contacts, and I'll connect you with Teresa for caregiver info. I'm happy to do that. Um, and that goes for anyone as well. If you are ever in need of anything, I'm happy to connect you as I'm able to. Um, I see Tim has a question. I'm going to plug our next meeting in just in case anyone has to hop off before we, we get around to Tim here. But um, our next meeting, I'm very excited to announce, will be a Dementia Friends training on May 20th. We are working with the Akron Summit County Public Library uh, system. We're going to host that in person at um, the Akron Summit County Main Library. Uh, there's going to be more information to come through with that. We're planning a whole full day event. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have different trainings. We're going to do the dementia friendly training. We have an author coming in. Uh, his name is John Thorndike to speak about the experience that he had caring for his father um, who had dementia or Alzheimer's. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it was, it might have been dementia. Yeah, I can't remember yeah. what form of dementia it was, if it was Alzheimer's yeah. or another form. But, yeah. but I've heard, I've heard amazing things about him and his experience. Mm -hmm. So he's going to come in and speak. And then we're working on a bunch of different arts and um, activities to go on throughout the afternoon for those living with dementia or Alzheimer's and their caregivers or just the general public. So um, again, more information will come out about that as we continue planning for it, but it is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. We're all really excited about it. So definitely mark your calendars. Um, so that will be our next uh, quarterly faith community meeting. It's going to be the Dementia Friends training on May 20th. Yeah. So the Friday after Senior Summit. So we will true. plan all of your May weekends. 